here today with Kate Juniper of Juniper Editing. Hey, Kate. Hi, how are you, Kelly? I'm good. And she is talking to us from Victoria, Canada. A little, she's kind of in a small place on the edge of the world. Like I feel like I'm, she's, you're probably more physically on the edge of the world than I am, but I'm, I'm kind of in this pocket of, of kind of nowhere. <laughs> and I wouldn't live anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Go back into the wider world and you know go visit a bigger city, but um, yeah, yeah no, it's, it works for me. Anyway. Yeah, I like it. I like the quiet and the privacy. So you have an editing company. Tell us about how you got started and what kind of editing you do. Yeah, um, so I've been uh, an editor for about six years. Um, it was something I kind of uh, fell into in a way. I was doing it for a long time before I realized that it was. Uh, actually my calling um i think something of the difference of being an editor in uh, academia mm -hmm. and actually being a realizing that editing in the in the business and and literary worlds uh, is a much much different thing mm -hmm. uh so it was when i started working for a publishing house that i um mm -hmm. the editing side of things uh in that was in the more creative areas um and yeah, so my, my practice as a, as a literary editor kind of grew from there. I, was, uh, I became senior editor in a publishing house overseeing a team of about 70 freelance editors. Um, and very, about a year and a half in, I realized that that was what I wanted to be doing. I wanted to be doing that good work um, uh, rather than managing it. So um, I founded uh, Juniper Editing and Creative. Um, and it provides editing services to individuals, businesses, and, uh, and institutions um, of several different kinds. Um, so, you know, individual-wise, I work with authors and artists. Um, I help them uh, with their novels. They may be, you know, in the final stages. Um, often they're in rough draft form. Uh, and that's the thing I really love um, the most is that developmental editing. So, yeah. um, you know, the mechanical side of things, as I was doing in academia, very satisfying, kind of like doing a crossword puzzle. You know, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, misplaced pieces of punctuation and the rest, but um, really getting into the, the bones of a, of a story and um, playing with the structure of it, heightening drama, making sure the characterization is consistent and um, dialogue flows well, you know, all of that kind of good stuff that makes a book a real page turner yeah. um, is, is where my passion lies. So, and you know, that, that does, I think, trend, um, transition into um, business writing and business books uh, as well. Yeah. Um, and yeah, institution wise, um, galleries and um, uh, museums and things. I also do a little bit of, um, editing work for them a lot a lot of the time that's more kind of standardizing uh you know ex exhibition catalogs and things like that got it, um, got it. but um yeah the stickler inside uh really enjoys that too. that's lovely i hate that part um <laughs> that gives me a headache and often i don't even see it um i often don't even see it because i'm a one of those big person the, the developmental editor is is the stuff that i really love mm -hmm. and i often don't even see those technical those technical pieces of the editing it's it's kind of crazy talk a little bit if you will about the different types of editors that there are um, if you can yeah. be specific about that yeah so um, structural editing uh, has a lot of different names um, it goes under substantive developmental mm -hmm. content editing um, those editors are um, you know uh, the ones that you and I probably um, recognized as our our kin. Um, they're the people that really delve into the the um, the structure of of, uh, of a book, um, the organization, basically making sure that um, no questions left unanswered uh, at the end of reading. Um, and then you have um, your copy editors, proofreaders, the uh, the sticklers, the people you know going through with a magnifying glass and a fine tooth comb, and um, you know and weighing up the pros and cons of keeping a comma or taking it out. Um, so, you know, a lot of, there is a lot of overlay between um, those types of editor. Um, many editors do all of those things as I do. Um, but I think even if uh, an editor is excellent at, uh, at all three of those mm -hmm. aspects of 
of editing, uh, they usually have one that they are um, most passionate uh, and most excellent at. Yeah, I discovered really quickly that the technical, the proofreader, the, that rough draft person who tidies everything up, I really could could care less where the comma is as long as it doesn't affect the content or the, the storyline. I don't care. <laughs> I know there's, you know, people also are going. Yeah. Great to hear it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say there are thousands of editors, hopefully, that will watch this and they're going to go, oh, what did she just say? The comma means every, and I realize the comma obviously <laughs> means a lot in the tone of a sentence. I understand that, but I don't, um, I don't often notice it. And, and I am very passionate about that content, the flow from the beginning of the book to the end and making sure, like you said, no questions left unanswered. And because I do business books primarily, um, I've done a few novels and they're they're okay those are a bigger um, those are a bit more challenging for me because I think very analytically and linear and novels don't always do that you know I saw uh, on Pinterest a, a graphic of what a novel looks like you first chapter and then it's all these squiggly lines to the end you know and that makes a great novel where a business book you know is pretty much like from here to here that's where you're going and since it's easier for my brain to work that way and keep the big picture, that's that's my favorite kind of and book. I mean, that's that's the thing, really, isn't it? And that's one of the fascinating things about editing too is, um, depending on the format that you're working within, mm -hmm. um, and again, you know, editors can work with you know across so many yes. different genres of of of, uh, mm -hmm. of literature and uh, and writing. That yeah, that comma. Um, you know, in Mrs. Dalloway is crucial in Lean In is going to, you know, it's not going to strike a chord with anyone. And right. so it's, um, you know, that's another really fun aspect of the editorial process is, uh, you know, is being intimate with the genre um, of the book that you're working within and, and making choices that are going to suit and serve right. um, that, that message and that, uh, right. that, that particular book. Right. So for the people that are watching this, they're looking at self-publishing and they want to, they're thinking about anyway, doing it this DIY, like starting from scratch and managing each process themselves. Where do you go? Where do you recommend people go when they look for a copy editor? Um, that's a great question. I mean, it's, I think as a lot of it has to do with relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, I personally think that having a good relationship with um, with the person that you're you know you're you're asking to edit your work or for me with my authors um, that is really important um, you know part of being an editor is being uh, a coach of sorts you yep. know being able sure. to talk sometimes absolutely um, as well as someone to be an advisor and um, right and a fixer upper so you know i mean word of mouth uh i think is a really ask you know, other authors absolutely yep, yep. Um, especially those who uh you know are writing in your genre um as they say a lot of editors are sensitive and intelligent enough to um to apply uh their practice appropriately to every genre but that's not to say that uh, a sci-fi um author uh can't and shouldn't seek out an editor intimately uh, right. you know familiar with that kind of uh, right. that work. um you know and aside from that i mean aside from word of mouth uh i think it's i you know as far as i'm concerned it's my job to uh to to reach authors uh i want people to see um, what I'm doing. I want to, to, to tell them more about right. um, the, the practice of editing, right. the profession of editing. Right. Um, this, the modern world is one in which writing, you know, everyone is a writer mm -hmm. uh, and there is no filter on what you can publish and right. put out into the right. world. And I hope that despite the fact that some people lament that as, you know, the, the end of the uh, integrity of the English language. Right. Um, I hope that um, that the printed word uh, is still, you know, I think I think it's, I think our knowledge of um, the fact that language is deteriorating, or at least we see it um, in its lesser forms a lot more, mm. um, just makes those 
those people who really truly um, love and have a passion for publishing books that much more dedicated to. Uh, yes, to it also makes them really stand out. Um, it also makes them really stand out. Yeah, so being dedicated to your work, whether that's as an author or an editor, it will always matter. It will always matter that you're doing your absolute best. Exactly. So when people ask me, do you do editing services by yourself? I don't. Um, we don't do that here because I really am a one-stop shop for people. I, I call it boutique service, boutique style. So I want you to come in. I want to give you a cup of tea or coffee. I want to chat for a while. I want to provide coaching. And yes, we do editing and yes, we'll publish your book, but it is a relationship based mm -hmm. publishing company. So when people ask me, how do you find an editor? I say the same thing you do. I tell them, Get on, you know, wherever you hang out with your, uh, your author friends, hopefully you are, hanging out with writers, either online or in person. Ask them who they use. Ask them if, you know, is that editor in, the, are you writing in the same genre? What do they like? And then do not be afraid to um, conduct an interview process with each editor you're thinking of using. I would never submit a manuscript from someone you found on Google that you haven't spoken to in person. You know, pay them the 200 bucks and see, you are not going to be happy. It's money absolutely wasted. Don't be, um, don't be afraid to step into that entrepreneurial role as an author and say, I'm going to interview editors until I find the best one for my book because it is largely relationship based. Um, there's a lot of conversations between the writer and the editor and you need to feel that that energy to, to be good between the, you as a writer and the editor that you pick. And there's a, there's the perfect editor for every writer. So don't, you know, if you have to go through 20, it's okay. Your editor is out there. Just keep looking. Um, yeah, just keep looking and don't, don't be afraid to really invest the money. So that's another question. I have no scope of reference for this because I don't offer this in my company but for those people who want to DIY the whole process what do they look what should they be looking at certainly I don't think you can have a manuscript of 20 to 50 thousand words professionally edited for two hundred dollars and come even close to what you're looking for as an end product can you yeah. give us just a ballpark figure um, of what that should look like money wise sure. well I mean uh, I think a lot of editors work um, on a per word basis mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know that that's um, generally how my rates are set, unless it makes sense for me um, uh, or the author to to work on an hourly basis. Um, usually, that's with smaller smaller things. Um, but I mean, for a fifty thousand word manuscript, um, if it, it you know, and again, this depends uh, as well on the degree of editing that you require. Um, if it's you know, if you are a seasoned author, if you have beta readers and uh, other, um, you know, relationships with other friends and, and mm -hmm. good strong writers, uh, then you may only require a copy edit or a, a proofread. Um, the likelihood is, however, that you're going to, uh, if this is your first experience and first, your manuscript's first encounter with a professional editor, you know, I don't think that, I think it's very rare that a manuscript could not benefit from a substantial yeah. content edit. Yeah. Um, and that's one that would necessarily, you know, it would, it, a content edit would also turn to the mechanics of that. Right. Um, I would always advise that uh, if you have a hefty edit like that, you follow it up with a proofread. Right. So, I mean, in that case, I would say, you know, a budget of 15 to 100 to 2000 dollars for yep. uh, editing, yep. uh, and upper, that upper amount would be for two rounds, right? Um, is uh, is a reasonable um, and fairly standard price um, for commissioning uh, from a professional editor. Yep. Um, and in terms of investment, um, not proceeding with professional editing. Uh, I think, and I've, you know, I think every, most people in the publishing um, industry would agree, is is basically denying the investment that you've made so far. Right. In your exactly. It can wipe the slate clean in terms of how your book will be will do in the retail market if you don't invest in editing. So you would agree with my statement that editing is not 
the place to go for the cheapest or lowest bidder. Um, editing is the place where you really want to invest your money. That, and I always say that is that from a design perspective, I love doing, I do all the covers for our books and I love that. And you know, in the Amazon market, that thumbnail, um, you know, often will get you the sale or not. So I, so I put a lot of credit there. I still would tell people if your budget is, if your budget is, is such that you have to trim the fat somewhere, don't let it be from your editor. You pay a good editor to do a good job and you can, you can trim it down in other places. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you yeah. can buy from that thumbnail and you might sell, um, 50, a hundred, a thousand copies that way. Right. right. But that's not going to find itself into the hands of another. No. Exactly. Exactly. It might, even, it might not even find itself read from cover to cover. And that's, nope. mm -hmm. you know, that's where sales really happen as with it editors is. and yep. um, word of mouth. So with books. And yep. um, I think I, not just as an editor, but I think I can speak for most readers in saying that finding a typo or a plot hole in, uh, in a book that I have purchased, paid for, I'm holding in my hand hands uh is pretty infuriating it is. um yeah and you know you don't as an author also want to be um on the end of wrathful readers no you do not <laughs> no you don't you, know, you want to be proud to put that book into the hands of your friends yep. and family yep. and uh, even getting the bad news from them is a pretty pretty horrifying feeling it is it is and it, it is it is just not the place that you want to find you don't want to find yourself with a published, distributed, retail available book with a typo in it. it. Now, I would tell every author that being an author and an editor is something that are very rarely good bedfellows. If you're going to write a book and be in, that's a very creative place to, to be versus editing your book. I don't personally think that a writer should also be their own editor. I just, I don't honestly think that. I think the more eyes you have on it, you know, if you can have, uh, so hire someone for proofreading and then get a different editor if you need to for content. The more people that see this book before it's finished and the more feedback you get from professionals, the better off you are. Would you say that's about right? Absolutely. I mean, for one thing, we we bridge gaps in our own mi in minds when mm -hmm. when we understand something, um, we can't see where those gaps in the logic right. are. Yep. Um, so for that reason alone, it's crucial to have other people reading your book. You yep. cannot be there sitting with every reader that reads your book to explain right. um, these things. And if you have to explain, that's not a failure from on the reader's part. It's a failure on your the writer's part. part. Absolutely. Um, and there is a reason why we have an industry standard margin of error um, in editing. And that is because no human being is capable of, of identifying every mm -hmm. error. In yep, that. exactly. Um, the more eyes on a book uh, at each stage, the better. I mean, yes, there's definitely such a thing as um, overthinking or maybe too many cooks in the kitchen when it comes to developing your book you need to know when to let right. go yes um, absolutely that's certainly not not easy for everyone this is a huge investment of time and money and mm -hmm. emotion yep um but that being said the more uh the more eyes on it especially i would say when it comes to um proofreading um better better. Than that. yeah yeah well, I appreciate you coming on. Tell us how people tell all the DIYers out there how they can find you and interview you and possibly hire you for editing their book. Absolutely. And I would, yeah, I would just add, um, when you're looking for an editor, you know, get a sample edit done Yes. You need to know that, um, that the person that you're hiring can deliver you the honest truth, mm -hmm. um, in, in, in a nice way. Um, you want to be able to have a productive and proactive uh, relationship with that person. So being able to um, be honest with one another and for that person to not only give you good criticism, but good uh, suggestions yep. for resolving uh, and, and moving ahead with that criticism is really, really important. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, so you can find me um, at my website, juniperediting.com. 
Okay, there'll be a link right up here in the corner if you're watching the replay. I'll add a little link to her website right up in the your upper right hand corner. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram, uh, which is also at June for Editing. Okay. Um, pretty um, regular feed of my what my projects um, and just general wisdom about the writing, editing, and publishing. Realm. That's where I found you. Was your Instagram? I love your Instagram channel. Mm -hmm. I always I've been popping over there for a little while now and just seeing what you're up to. Um, I post every day, but I don't look at my feed every day. So I always you're you're on my list of people to check up on when I yes. when I get on. I love it. I love it. Well, thanks so much for being on today. And if you're looking to DIY it, you know, lots of nuggets in here for you for how to do that. And yeah, so we'll see you next time. I got to record that. Okay. So, all righty. One more question. The last question, the question I ask every author and professional that we get on here, favorite book of all time. Right. Um, tough choice, but I will go with my um, old faithful. Um, Middle March by George Eliot. Ah, okay. What? Why is that your favorite? Can you elaborate um, on that? I read it at nineteen, the first time, and I, I mean, as you probably know, it's a bit of a tome. It's a yeah. Victorian nine hundred yeah, page beast of a novel, um, written by uh, a woman publishing as a man. Mm -hmm. And I was just so blown away with the world that she created. It was, you know, at once it's just a microcosm of this small village and the people within it. Um, but it, it deals with politics, philosophy, history, yeah, sociology and social yeah. thought. And, um, just the, the, the breadth of the, uh, information, but the way it was delivered in such, uh, beautiful and artful yeah. prose um, yes. really, really astounded me. Yes, it is. Yeah, so to think of this, you know, this young woman in Victoria. <coughs> right, that, that's to me, that's, yeah. that's what gets me and that she had to publish as a man. Exactly. <coughs> Sorry. Awful kind of um, realization for me, uh, I th you know, I, I, I really like strong women. Uh, in literature, and I mean the the protagonist Dorothea is <coughs> sorry a willful protagonist in her own right. She she seems you know she thinks she knows what she's doing. Right. She's making great, mature, brilliant choices, and surprise, surprise, it turns out that she um, she doesn't know quite as much as she but thinks she, she does. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, she's very she's very forgivable and lovable in that yeah, too. Yeah. That's a great novel. I never recommend novels of that size anymore because it seems like there are so few people with the taste for a long book, but I love to find a, it's a big investment of time and yeah, it's a long, it's a long book. <laughs> um, I love it because I am such a ferocious reader that I often finish the newer books that are coming out in a couple of days. Yeah. So I like the idea of reading a book that will take me through a couple of weeks time and I can really chew on it and the vocabulary is wonderful. And, mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, so I love the Victorian novels and so I, that you're the first person to say that a Victorian was their favorite. Uh, that's awesome. 